How's it going, everybody? And welcome to the Music Production Podcast. This is your host, Brian Funk. I make music as Afro DJ Mac. And today I'm going to be talking about the first 10 days of January 2018. And right now you're actually hearing a piece of music that I made for January. This is just a short little piece that uses some instruments I'm working on for my January Ableton Live Pack for my music production club. In my music production club you get a download every month, as well as a ton of really cool things, sounds, Ableton Live Packs, video tutorials that you get just for joining. But anyway, um, let me tell you a little bit about January. So if you listen to the last episode, you'll know January is a little challenge to make a little jam every single day in the month of January. It doesn't have to be anything great. It doesn't have to be special. It doesn't have to be any good. It can be you just fooling around on an instrument, um, sequencing a drum beat, um, learning how to play something on an instrument, making a song. It doesn't matter. The point is that you're doing something every single day, that you're getting to work, that you're building this discipline of every day you're going to make some kind of music. And uh, there are, of course, you know, some days you'll have where you get to spend a lot of time on it and other days where you're in a rush and you throw things together. I did this a bit last year. I joined about halfway through and, you know, got some profound um, results from it because I found that, you know, I was very productive. And I, I think one of the things that I really appreciate about it the most is you kind of prove to yourself that you can really do quite a lot and maybe even more than you think you're capable of. And this is something like uh, we learn when we're faced with hard times or challenging things, often exercise or training will do that for you where you find out you can actually push yourself a little further than you thought you could. And I've heard expressions or sayings where they say like, you know, when you uh, finally get like super tired and you think you're exhausted, that there's still like 40% left in your tank, meaning you could keep going. And if you could just battle through the mental stuff and overcome the physical pain of it. And it's very true. And it's empowering when you learn that. And January is sort of like a musical way to do that and achieve that where you find out you could do something every day if you decide to do it and, you know, carve out the time as best you can. Um, so, it's a great empowering feeling and right now today's january 11th and i've made it 10 days in a row managed to do something every single day for the first 10 days and i feel great about it i'm very excited and um i'm very ex happy to do something today after this i record this podcast not really sure what i'm going to do yet but i'm going to do something you know because i don't want to break the chain and that concept, breaking the chain, is something, I don't remember where I heard about it, but I think it comes from Jerry Seinfeld, where a comedian asked him something like, how to become a better comedian, how do I write better jokes? And Seinfeld said, the way you write better jokes is to write more jokes, just keep writing them. And he suggested you get a calendar, and every day you write jokes, make an X on the calendar. And if you don't make a, you know, write jokes that day, you don't write an X. And the idea is that, you know, you can miss a day, but try not to miss two days in a row. And what will eventually happen is you'll start doing it for a few days in a row, and you'll have a lot of X's, you've got this chain of X's, and it gets to a point where you don't want to break the chain. And I'm kind of there right now where I've gone 10 days in a row, and I don't want to mess that up. I don't want to miss day 11, and then, you know, I have to start over kind of on day 12 on my little chain, my streak. So it's motivating just to not break the chain. And it's, it's a great, like, kind of, a, I don't know, I guess it's a sort of a challenge that you give yourself um, to do. But once you start getting a few days in a row, you don't want to miss it, and it inspires you to keep going. So 10 days in is pretty exciting, and I have a feeling like I could probably do it all 31 days. And... Um, even if stuff comes up. And for instance, I faced a challenge right off the bat on day one. Um, on New Year's Day, I woke up sick with some kind of flu or stomach virus, throwing up all day long. And I thought I was doomed. You know, I'm not going to be able to do January. <laughs> you know, I'm going to start off missing the first day. And that was definitely kind of embarrassing because I just released a podcast literally the day before saying I was going to do this. 
And within, you know, 12 hours, I was, you know, laid out feeling awful. But um, in between um, episodes of being sick, I grabbed my phone and I opened up Re um, Figure by Aliupa. It's not Reason anymore, the Propel ads, it's uh, Aliupa, but they're affiliated, I suppose. Uh, Figure is such a cool little app. Um, it lets you do um, three different tracks, a lead, a bass, and drums. And you, it's one of these apps that like isn't trying to emulate like some kind of piece of hardware in the real world where it actually makes use of the touch screen. And, you know, I get frustrated with apps sometimes because like you're trying to turn a knob by swiping your finger and it just doesn't feel right. But Figure is one of those apps that has done something interesting with the touchscreen interface. And it's kind of um, a unique thing where you're kind of moving your finger along to play notes and play the beats. But I managed to uh, spend about five minutes coming up with a short little thing and posting it. I've been posting all of this stuff on Instagram. So I'm, I'm Afro DJ Mac on Instagram, if you want to follow. Um, and the hashtag is hashtag January. 2018. It's January, spelt with an M for jam. And um, I managed to get that on there and then pretty much rolled over and fell back asleep. And the next day was also challenging because I still wasn't feeling very well. And I managed to get the iPad out and I used um, Fugue Machine and Patterning all going through um, Audio Bus. Fugue Machine and Patterning, again, are two apps that I think make nice use of the touch screen. They're not really emulating anything you've ever played in real life or something that's on the computer that works better with a mouse or something. Um, Fugue Machine is basically, um, you make a MIDI clip that plays notes, but you have four different playheads that go over that MIDI clip. So you can change the speed of each clip, of each playhead, you can change the pitch so you can like transpose the notes on the playhead. You can play them in reverse, back and forth. And it creates that idea of a fugue. And a fugue is really just a repeating melody um, played over and over again. And it's surprisingly musical, this app. And I managed to put something together quickly by sequencing it, linking it using Ableton Link with a patterning. Just made a quick beat and then just made a little clip and recorded it and again rolled back over and went back to sleep um finally on day three i managed to kind of get up a little bit and this is where um january gets kind of fun is it's a great excuse to try out some new toys or some things you may have had lying around that you haven't really had a chance to play with in a long time and this gave me a chance to use um Isotonics Samsara. And I don't even really know how to describe Samsara um, because I haven't gone too deep with it yet. And I know it's capable of a lot more than what I did with it, but it's this granular looper. So you are basically, you can record loops into it. Um, I just dropped samples into the interface but it's this weird granular looper where you, you're kind of recording loops, putting loops in there, but then you're playing them back in uh, little granules, like a, like a granule synthesizer. I'll just let you hear a couple seconds of this right now. stop that here and what you were hearing was uh, three layers of that instrument uh, I had a little percussive sample and that's the first thing you heard and then I had a kind of like I think some sort of um, music box sample that I just put in there and then uh, you know made this weird loop and then I just transposed it down an octave to double it and that's all that track is and again like you know listening to it it's not you know it's no masterpiece but it was a fun experiment to fool around with that new instrument, Samsara, which I highly encourage you to check out. I'll give you a link in the show notes. 
Um, and it was a fun exploratory kind of event for me. I'm kind of at that point coming out of my sickness. So it's like the first time I've, I think that was the first time I was sitting in a seat in three days. So I worked on that a little bit. And it, what it showed me was that that instrument is really powerful for making kind of crazy noises. As you heard, it, it's not really like a melodic thing, but I can see that being really useful for sound design um, or even like say scoring or all kinds of things that um, might call for some kind of interesting, weird sort of textures and sounds. Um, moving along, I, I, on the fourth day, I, I managed to bust out my coin-op Ableton Live template, which is an 8-bit video game template that is all set up ready to go to make 8-bit music. Honestly, nothing special there. I'm not even going to play it for you. Um, but it was fun. Again, this was a day where I didn't have quite as much time and still wasn't really feeling that great, but managed to sit down and make a short little piece of music. Um, day five is where I think this starts to come to life for me, because on this day I'm feeling better, and I have all of my uh, analog hardware synths hooked up and ready to go. I, I was using Electron's Analog Rhythm for the drums, the Korg MS-20, the Prophet 6, um, Moog Sub Fatty, and I think, uh, oh, and the Korg Volca FM was what I had set up. And I sort of had a revelation this day, and this is great because um, this is something that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't doing this January challenge. And I'm trying to emphasize like how valuable this is by just giving you my kind of um, story of what I've been going through and some specific examples, but I think you'll be able to imagine that if you're doing it yourself, um, you're probably seeing similar things happen. But if you're not, you can imagine how you might open up new doors for creative possibilities by doing something like this. So what I did was I've, you know, I've had, um, I use Ableton Live's um, external, external instrument device. And this is a device that basically receives MIDI and sends it to whatever MIDI device you have. And then it also has a little input where it receives the audio from that device. And this, what's good about the external instrument is that it allows you to route the MIDI and bring the audio back in all on one track. So you're sending MIDI through you know, a MIDI track and it's pumping out the audio from your synth or your drum machine or whatever you're using. And it just keeps things nice and tidy. So. I've had these like little instruments set up for my, you know, my synths with the outputs and I saved the presets, but funny enough, it never occurred to me to put them in an instrument rack with effects. So I started doing that for each one of my synths. This is before I even started making any music. I made my own instrument racks with the external instrument in there instead of say like, you know, a sampler or, or operator or something. I used the external instrument and then it followed it with, um, different effects. Um, I was using Live 10, which is pretty much all I'm using these days, except for when I'm making sound packs for people that are still using Live 9. I'm using um, Live 10, and I had the Echo device. I think I had Drum Bus, um, the new EQ8, which just lets you go down a little further in frequencies. And uh, I built these devices, and then I had another great revelation. <laughs> and this might sound silly, but... Um, Again, in Live 10, they allow you to categorize your sounds and kind of tag them with these colors. And they give you seven colors. And I've, you know, I've had Live 10 since the end of the summer, and I didn't really know what to do with them. I was kind of, I tried to do it a little bit by like mood, like these are happy sounds, these are moody, these are uh, gloomy sounds. But I tend to find like my sounds aren't happy or gloomy until I start playing melodies and that's what really gives them their emotion. So it didn't really work out. So I haven't been using them a lot until I realized I should make something called like my hardware instruments. And I made a category for my hardware synth so that I can click on this category and then everything that's I've made that connects to my hardware synths are right there. So I just drop them on a track and it's nice and easy to find everything. So I've got, um, you know, my synths, my drum machines. I've got a few pieces of um, external audio effects, you know, like hardware reverb and compressors. 
So I've made instrument racks for all of them, and they're all in these this hardware category. And once I made my first category and I kind of understood like where I was going to go with this, then things start falling into place. I made another one called um, Utility Effects, which are basically like the types of effects I use a lot. So I've made like a channel strip. I have like a couple compressor effect racks I've made. Things that like I tend to look for a lot and put on tracks a lot, I just put in this particular category. And uh, so by doing the January challenge, it allowed me to come to these two new um, realizations of how I can streamline my workflow when I'm doing stuff. Because in the past, I'd, it was much more clunky. But now things are a lot smoother. I'm just dragging and dropping things and everything's kind of right where I need it. Um, so for this track that I made on day five, it was a very hardware synth based thing where um, I made a little, um, little arpeggiated piece on the Prophet 6. And then I brought in the Korg Volca FM, the rhythm, the uh, sub fatty for the bass, and um, the MS-20, the Korg MS-20 came in. And if you're familiar with the Korg MS-20, um, I, it's just such a great synth. And something I'm really loving about it is playing a melody and while I'm playing to just slightly detune the second oscillator and just mess around with that to just give it this kind of like drifting pitch thing. And I'm just finding like every time I do that, I'm, I'm loving the results. So I'm going to play this track for you. This is uh, the one for day five. I called it a departure just because it made me think of like leaving um, for whatever reason. I'm going to play this for you. I think it's about a little over four minutes. I'll let you hear some of it. And I'll be back in a minute.
Okay. And I hope you enjoyed that. That was um, a lot of fun for me to make. I, I had a lot of time that night to really s just play around um, with my synthesizers, design sounds, and um, jam it out on the PA system so that, you know, it was like you can really feel the music. Um, for me, I think that's an important part especially I think in electronic music that sometimes you need to have it loud. It sounds different loud because, you know, especially um, like very beat driven music um, to feel those beats um, helps a lot. And, you know, I probably had um, my music just going and looping for hours that night. And it was just a great time to explore and the pressure is off in January in a lot of ways. I mean, I do feel a lot of pressure, like I have to do something every day. But it's nice to have the pressure off as far as like quality goes. It doesn't really matter how it turns out. This wasn't necessarily for any project. But it actually might wind up in something that um, I hope to tell you about soon. A little project for a certain installation. Um, it, I think it might fit nicely. But uh, yeah, that was day five. And that was like kind of, you know, the first day where I really felt like the ball was rolling a bit. And, um, you know, I'm in the groove here. And like, um, you know, this could be done. It was the kind of the feeling. Um, so um, moving along, moving along. Uh, the next day was day six, obviously. And on day six, I was pretty excited about the hardware synth situation. And... Um, I did some more music that way. And something kind of cool happened on day six. On day six, I added the OP-1 to the situation. And I was fooling around with the OP-1. I thought I was going to use the arpeggiator. It's got a really awesome arpeggiator in it now since the last update. But it wasn't really vibing with what I was trying to do. So I turned on the FM radio. And this is just such a great feature of the OP-1 because the FM radio is like that, you know, when you need something and you don't know where you're going, it's a completely random thing. It, it, what you get depends on what's on the radio at that moment. So it's like, you know, luck of the draw, chance galore kind of thing. And um, I wound up finding this sports announcer talking about, I think, the New York Giants football team. Here he is. And what I liked about that particular guy talking was how animated he was. You know, he was, his voice has a lot of um, uh, different pitches in it. So what I did with that is first I reversed it. I believe I time stretched it a bit, but then I put it through an auto tune, a pitch corrector. I was using Isotope's Nectar 2. Isotope Nectar 2 is um, my go-to, um, you know, pitch corrector plugin. I, I like it a lot. It's got this tracking mode and it's got a mixing mode. And what that means basically is tracking mode is when you're recording and it, I guess it like uh, reduces the fidelity of its processing so that you can, you can um, have the effects like in real time. So the latency is much less. So the computer processes the audio through the plugin much quicker. So you can actually use it live. And I do use it live when I perform. And um, so that, that mode's great because it allows you to like actually hear your vocal effects while you're performing. And then it has the mixing mode, which I suppose is a little cleaner and, you know, the higher fidelity and whatnot. And, um, you know, the latency is higher, so you can't really use it for performance. But I ran this vocal, I, I put it in, I was doing E minor, the key of E minor, so I set it to E minor, and I ran the vocal through it. And the other little thing I did is I used the, the transpose control on the live, on Ableton's clips, you know, on, on the clips you can um, transpose them. So I automated the transpose modulation envelope so that it would just kind of move up and down and pitch sort of randomly. I just drew them in without paying attention to what I was doing. And this is what I wound up with. I'll let you hear that. Oh. 
Um, <laughs> so that's the radio guy being transposed around, but then pitch corrected. Especially love that little, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's a cool little sound. I didn't spend much time um, doing much more than just random things to that little uh, radio guy. Um, and I think it came out really cool, like just these, um, it sounds melodic at certain points. And especially when I made my loops, the repetition of it at a regular rhythm suddenly starts to sound like something musical. Uh, I'll let you hear this. I'll unreverse this just so you can hear what it sounds like. You can kind of hear some of the like phrasings. <laughs> so uh, that's the time stretched, uh, pitch shifted, auto tuned radio voice. Um, you know, ranting about the Giants football. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't even know exactly what he's talking about. I got about, you know, 10 or 15 seconds of them, but it's a random thing. I've never tried anything like that before where I just took like the radio guy or some voice, some speaking voice and just auto tune mangled it and turned it into a little vocal part. And it was like the exact touch that this little track I was working on that night needed. And again, this turned out to be what I consider like a very lucrative night as far as being productive. So I'm going to let you hear this one too. Um, this was the sixth day. This is a lot of analog hardware stuff. And the pitch shifted, mangled, corrected voice of a sports announcer. Here we go.
Okay, and I'm back. Uh, I hope you like that one. I hope you're enjoying this, um, indulging me a little bit here as I play through some of the things I've been working on these last few days. Again, the point is to really just show you that um, you never know what you're going to get when you uh, get to work here and when you give yourself this kind of discipline. It really is very productive and fruitful. I'm having a lot of fun with that. Day seven was another one of these days that was uh, short on time. And um, I was a little bit afraid I was not going to have a chance to actually do anything. But I decided to make some time, maybe stay up a little bit later than I should have. And I put something together using the iPad app Sampler. It's Sampler without an E at the end. So it's just S-A-M-P-L-R. Really cool app. Again, another app that sort of makes use of the touch screen and not so much relying on or imitating actual hardware or knobs or faders. It's a unique interface that you can only have on an iPad. Really cool app and gives you some really fun ways to manipulate samples. Um, and a little reminder for myself that that's a great tool. I've used it in the past before, haven't really opened it up in a couple months, but again, something that I can use that I've been reminded about. Um, Day eight, I spent some time exploring Ableton Live 10's Wavetable synthesizer. I love Wavetable. I did a nice long video on it um, back when they announced Live 10, just about like a 45 minute video exploring it. Uh, maybe I'll put the link to that in the show notes if you want to check that out. It's just um, really such a great expressive synthesizer. Uh, the patch I made, I I made use of the uh, aftertouch to kind of modulate the wave table to kind of give it like a little buzz as you press down on the pads and uh, just made a little melody with a little beat behind it. Nothing too crazy, just a little jam. That's again on my Instagram. I'll let you check it out there if you want to see that. Um, but, you know, another good chance to work on something that, uh, you know, I liked a lot. Um, day nine, I, I just love this little piece of music. You heard it at the opening. I'll just let you hear it again quick. See, so refresh you. And that one was done with some instruments I'm currently working on. I'm not going to say too much about them because uh, they're going to be my next release that should be out in the next couple days, probably this weekend, for the Afro DJ Mac Music Production Club. So uh, shout out to all you members. I love you guys. Thanks for being a part of the club. Um, I had no idea this subscription service would work so well when I started it. And, um, you know, your support is some of the... Um, uh, the highest honors I can receive that you would trust me every month to bring you something. And I'm excited about how this one's turning out. It's going to be cool if you're into the kinds of sounds I like. If you like the way that sounds, really kind of washed out, mellow, hazy type of sound. Um, but that one was a lot of fun to do. It, I did a little um, um, video to go along with it that I made using another isotonic product, um, isotonic studios world viewer, which is a really nice, uh, way to create audio reactive visuals. So there's like all these different modules and you can put them on different tracks in your music. So like you can have like your bass drum making this like weird circle things splashing on the screen with every hit. And then like, if a synth comes in, it can do like lightning bolts. Uh, it's very abstract. I'm calling them lightning bolts and sunspots or whatever, but um, and that all gets collected in this final device that you put somewhere in your track. Usually I put in the master and you can kind of mix between them and fade them. And then you get all these like different like lights and stuff moving around to go along with your music. It's really cool. And you don't have to do a lot. And that's what I like about it because I just want to have like some cool, interesting visuals going on so that, uh, I can make my little video. Uh, I don't want to really have to spend a long time making it. And, uh, especially when I have to do a jam every day, I don't have a lot of time to do that. So um, I made a little uh, 
video with that one using Isotonic Studios World Viewer. Put a link to that in the show notes too. Um, and the last one I have to show you is um, from yesterday, day 10. Uh, and this one was cool because it, it happened sort of by accident. Um, I was at my job at school and uh, one of the students was talking to me about music and I was kind of showing him like, you know, what I do and like how I can do some stuff. And he opened up a track. Oh man, I forget the artist now, but very like EDM dance music uh, kind of music. And he was like, can you do this kind of music? Because he's getting interested in learning music. So um, I was like, yeah, sure. And I just kind of threw together this little arpeggiated line and a drum beat with the uh, 909 and um, showed him it, how I would do that. And it was only in a couple minutes. And I was just about to close the session and delete it when I said, oh, I got to do a jam today. So I saved it. And when I got home, I added, I think, another synth track and I put some like uh, white noise to it. But I felt like it needed something else, you know, before I felt like kind of satisfied with like calling it a day on the jam. So I opened up the Chip Speech plugin and that's by Plog. Chip Speech is such a cool plugin. Um, it's kind of like a robot voice plugin. You can actually write in text. So you can say, write, type something in there, tell it what you want it to say, and when you play it on the keyboard, the melody moves through the words and it, it's like a talking robot, basically, a singing robot. Korg has like a guitar pedal that I can't think of the name of that kind of does something similar, but Chip Speech is based on like all these different like robot modules. It's made by Plogue, which um, that's spelled P-L-O-G-U-E, Plogue. I think it's called Plogue. I don't think, know if it's pronounced differently, but um, they make the uh, Chip Sounds plugin, which is a really awesome 8-bit, you know, old school, not even just 8-bit, but like old school video game um, sound synthesizer. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's sample-based. I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to say because I'm not sure if it's sample-based or synthesis, but uh, it sounds great. It's awesome. And there's like, it goes from like, you know, the Nintendo Game Boy, the Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, I don't know, maybe, maybe not that far, but it goes to like Atari, um, all these different systems, you see these like silhouettes and you kind of know what they are, but they don't really tell you what they are, but they're based on these old chips, chip tune, uh, chips that were used in these video game systems. But anyway, um, chip speech is unlike any other plugin that I know, which is one of the reasons I have it because I can't do this inside of Ableton live, for instance. So I had to pick that one up and you type in your words and you play the melody on your keyboard and it sings it for you in this robot voice. Um, the, the, <laughs> it has something, uh, it has like some sample, you know, um, lines you can write in. I forget what it said, but part of it had stay forever and I deleted everything else and just left stay forever. And that's what the robot is saying, stay forever. And, uh, it's over this kind of like EDM dance music kind of background. Uh, I'll let you hear it right now. It's such a cool plugin and it really gave this track like the finishing touch it, I thought it needed. And that's stay forever. <laughs> um, yeah, it's again like um, I have, you know, I don't remember when I bought Chip Speech. It was like right when it came out. I was just so excited about it. 
and have had very little use with it. Um, it's just like one of those things you like kind of forget you have, you know? And um, because I needed something, I just decided to start looking in, in my plugins folder. I was like, oh yeah, I should get this thing. I need some sort of lead. So I dropped it in and, you know, that was the thing it needed. And now again, it's like, I've got this thing, kind of this tool in my pocket that I may have sort of forgot I had. And this exercise of January has allowed me or reminded me that I have it. And I think that's like one of the most valuable things I'm getting out of it at this point is sort of rediscovering the tools and um, investigating the tools I have, going a little bit deeper with them and seeing what they're all about and what they're capable of. And it's fun to do it in this way where it doesn't really matter how it turns out. The point is not how good the music I'm making is. The point is that I'm doing it. And, um, you know, I, I think it's very easy as a musician to get caught up in like this idea of being artistic, you know, you gotta find your, you know, feeling and, you know, express yourself and all of these things. And, uh, it has to be cool and, uh, you know, can't be cliche. It's gotta, you know, all these things we put ourselves through, um, about making art that get in the way of making it in the first place. And, when you let go of that and that's not the point anymore, it's surprising how often what you make actually turns out kind of cool and interesting because it's like you get rid of that like kind of self-conscious or pretentious part of you that's trying to do something interesting and just do things and trust yourself that it will turn out interesting. And if it doesn't, who cares? I mean, the fact of the matter is you, you did some practice, you got some work done and you're going through the process and you know, you're not going to strike gold every time. I, I didn't play you everything I did because it's not, <laughs> so it's not worth the time on the podcast. But it's just something that um, you know I've gone through. And, and I think every single day that I did something, all 10 days, there's some little lesson, some little nugget to take from it. And if nothing else, it's the empowerment of like having done it, of gone and being done and saying, yeah, I did that. And I'm on a roll right now, 10 days in a row, feeling great. I've been really pumped um, about seeing what everyone else is doing. You know, I'm not even talking about that yet. Maybe I should do an episode too about some of the like really cool posts that other people are doing because there's so much. Um, I think the last time I noticed it was well over 3,000 posts on Instagram of people doing January 2018. Um, and, you know, on Instagram, it's only one minute, so it doesn't take you too long to go through things. And it's you're going to find inspiration like crazy. There's been so many things I saw. Um, one thing that kind of uh, shocked me because it was like I never did this before. I saw someone doing um, electric guitar with a slide and the Ebo. Now, the Ebo is this like weird little battery-powered device that you hold over the string on your guitar, and it, it basically vibrates the string and creates this kind of like howling sound, like a feedback or, or um, a whistle or something. I actually released an Ableton Live Pack way in the early days um, of an Ebo that I used on my acoustic guitar, my old Gibson acoustic guitar. And it's just such a cool sound. It sounds like a flute or something. Um, I'll put the show notes for that. I'll put that in the show notes too if you want to download that. It's free. Um, but someone was using the Ebo with a slide. And I had never thought to do that in all my years of a guitarist and having slides and having Ebos. I never thought to try that out. So it was really cool because they ran it through... Um, some sort of delay and reverb and it just created such a cool atmosphere as he moved up and down the strings and those kind of overlapping pitches sort of interfered and clashed with each other and sometimes it would like become harmonious and it just made me think like i don't do that i've never tried that and i gotta work that in somewhere so i mean just to give you like one tiny example of like all the inspiration you'll see and people are using all kinds of gear I mean, the OP-1 is definitely really popular, and so is um, a lot of the Electron stuff, especially like the Rhythm, the Octatrack. Um, and I have a hunch that has something to do with Cuckoo being, uh, you know, the uh, kind of master at those instruments that he is. Uh, he probably attracts a lot of followers that are into those instruments. So I think that might be part of the reason we're seeing all those. Because, I mean, also because they're just excellent instruments. But... 
Um, there's also a lot of people playing acoustic instruments and um, just so much cool stuff going on. And it's, it's a great reminder of like all the possibilities. And I think the kind of um, raw nature of it, you know, no one has a finished product really going up because it's, you can't really do that every day. Um, but the kind of like uh, in progress feeling of it is really inspiring. I mean, I always like that that kind of stuff, listening to the outtakes of songs or watching a band like work out a song. It's always interesting to see like, you know, how a, an act managed to turn this into the final product. So it's like kind of a behind the scenes thing too. And I'm pretty sure anyone listening to this podcast is into that stuff also. It's the production part of music production. <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah, you should definitely check it out if you have not already. And if you have, um, you know what I'm talking about. And also, if you are participating in the January 2018 thing, let me know. Hit me up. Tag me on Instagram. Send me an email, tw Twitter, whatever. Um, contact me and let me know that you're doing it because I want to see what you're doing too. And, uh, you know, check out your work because I'm sure there's a lot to learn and a lot of inspiration for me in there. And I love the community aspect. It's really fun knowing that like there's all these other people doing it too. And even on the days you feel like you're not going to be able to do it when you go and check it and you see, well, this, this person's doing it again. She's doing it again. He's doing it again. It, it makes you say like, all right, I got to do it now. And it, it gets you going, you know, it's kind of that kick in the butt you need sometimes. So I will be reporting back with you again soon on this. Um, hopefully in the next couple days, you know, I thought I was going to be doing this every day, but um, I've found that uh, just doing the jam itself does take a, a, you know, a lot of time when and time is precious and it's hard to find time to do all this stuff. And, uh, you know, we're all busy people, you understand, but I will be back to update you on this. I've got some interviews lined up too with some people that are really cool. That's going to be fun. So I encourage you to stay tuned to the music production podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode. I know this is a little bit different than some of the other ones, uh, mostly because I'm actually putting music on the music production podcast. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, appreciate you tuning in and listening through it. And um, yeah, um, please, if you're enjoying the show, leave a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, tell a friend, share it on the internet, put it on your social media, uh, help me spread the word about it. I would really appreciate that. That's really a nice thing for you to do. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for listening and have yourself a wonderful day.